Hey, how you doing? In today's video, photo mode in the GoPro Hero 11 Black and all of the photo settings that matter and what they actually mean. Let's get into it. Getting yourself into photo mode is really simple. Just use the mode button at the side of the screen to get to photo mode or if you want, you can swipe left or you can swipe right. Now, once you're in there, we've got a couple of different things on the screen. Up here in the top left, we can see it says 99 plus in this case. And essentially kind of what that means, let me block out the light there, is we've got 900 99 plus pictures that we can store on the SD card that's currently in the GoPro. So that's always going to tell you how much you've got left. Bonus video tip, if it's for video, it'll tell you how many hours or minutes you've got left in the SD card. Now, over here, we've got our camera mode. Here is the battery, so we can see this GoPro battery is currently at 86%. Then we've got our RAW mode. RAW is really, really important for photos, and we'll explain why later on. It might sound confusing, but trust me, raw mode will be the thing you will probably use the most. So it's definitely worth hanging out. We'll get in a bit more to raw mode in this GoPro Hero 11 Black in just a sec. Now, other icons are around here. Some of these are grayed out, so we're going to get into what those do and how you can customize these as well. And then we have the actual photo wide button here. So photo is photo mode, and of course wide is the actual lens that you're using. So if we tap this one, first of all, we can see we've got photo wide, we've got burst. Now what a burst mode does is it takes a burst of photographs. So if you're doing a lot of sports stuff, it'll take a load of photographs really, really quickly. And then if we go down to the bottom, we've got night photo, which kind of does exactly what it says in the 10 and that's take photos at night. So long exposure, you know, those light trails and all that kind of stuff. However, if you use an ND filter on the GoPro Hero 11 Black and you use night mode, you can get photos that look like this. So long exposure photography for water or anything that's got movement, that's the one to use. Now, you got like, okay, we've got three modes here. That's cool, Vic, but what do we do if we want to edit them? So all we got to do is select photo mode here. So photo white, if we press the edit symbol, we've got lots of different options. So we've got the lens, we've got the output, we've got scheduled capture, timer, and the zoom. Some of these you should never really ever, ever use. And the first one that you should really never use is the zoom. Just, just don't use the zoom. Do any zooming that you want to do in post. If you're editing your photos, you can crop in a little bit but don't use the digital zoom it's fine but just trust me it will kind of not be the best option for your photo so up here we've got lens so our output and we're going to come back to lens in a sec don't worry our output here is set to raw so we've got a couple of different options here we've got raw we've got standard so standard essentially is a jpeg file which most of you probably would have heard of uh, we can do a HDR photo, which kind of looks good for high contrast scenes as GoPro says themselves. And then super photo. So the GoPro Hero 11 Black in this case will kind of do everything that you think it should do to get the best possible photo. But if you want the best possible photo, go to RAW. Okay, so it saves it as a GPR file, which is a GoPro file, Lightroom and all those kinds of software will absolutely run and read that. And the JPEG, so you've got, you'll get two versions of your file, right? So the JPEG you can use straight away, but if you wanna get the best image out of the sensor in the GoPro, use the RAW file, because it uses all the sensor, it doesn't have any compression, so you're getting the best bang for your buck by using the RAW mode. Now, let's leave it in RAW. Schedule capture, this is something that, well, Let's see, if we turn it on here, we can schedule a capture or schedule. It's an Irish thing, schedule, schedule, schedule. Yeah, anyway. So you can set the GoPro to come on and do an action like a photograph. So we can turn it on here and we can have our time. So we can see right now it's 9.36 p.m. So we could turn it on and then we could, you know, turn it on at 9.39 and we can go back. And that means our GoPro is going to come on. It's a useful feature for some folks. I never really use it, but if you're getting up really early or if you don't, want to get up really early to take a picture of the sunrise or whatever this could well be the one for you so for now i'm just going to leave this one off and then if we go down we have a timer so you can set a time delay so you can actually get in the shot so maybe it's just you and you've got this beautiful photograph that you want to take but you're like how nobody is here to take the photograph so we can have a timer for three seconds or you can go right up to 10 seconds and because everything is really in focus in the gopro you don't really have to worry about getting yourself in focus so boom set it to 10 seconds run get the photograph because it will do it all automatically once we select this and if we press the shutter we can see the timer counting down so this is you running like tom cruise to yeah 
And if you press the shutter button again or the record button the top of the GoPro, it will cancel that countdown. So let's bounce back into our settings here and let's take off the timer because they're not running anywhere. Not today anyway. <clears throat> now, ProTune. So here's the interesting stuff, right? This is ProTune, ProTune. It takes the settings up a little bit more and it gives you more control. In a lot of cases, auto mode will be fine, but for some things, ProTune is the way to go. In fact, it's the only way you're gonna get better at photography is by delving into the big boy settings. Now in ProTune, once we go down to the shutter here, a lot of the times by default, it's going to be in auto, but depending on what you're shooting, if you've got a very fast moving scene, you might wanna dive in here and actually change the shutter, which will go right up to one over 2000 of a second, which is enough to freeze moving water or whatever you've got going on. A lot of cases, auto is fine, but this is a handy trick to to know where all of these settings are because you're never no gonna know what you're gonna take a photo of. So I'm just gonna leave it on auto for now. EV comp, this is the exposure value. So this essentially sets the brightness of the photo or the video. So by default, GoPros seem to overexpose slightly, which means they're a little bit too bright. So a lot of the time, maybe it's an idea to bring it down to like 0.5 or negative 0.5. Depending again on the scenario, you can bring it all the way up to plus 2.0. But I wouldn't be pushing this too hard. So zero or a lot of times zero, not 0.5 in a very bright day will work. Now, white balance. If you guys take anything from this video, white balance is so, so important. So white balance is how warm or cool the image is. A lot of the times cameras do a good job of setting the white balance, which means the colors and everything look right. But when you leave a camera in auto mode, if the scene changes as you're moving the camera or doing whatever, it may not correct the auto white balance too much, which means that the image that you take may not look as cool as you actually thought it should. So there's a couple of options here. You can leave it in auto, which in a lot of times, let's be honest, it will be okay, but it'll probably be the one shot that you really want to be a banger. And you're like, ah, I should have changed my white balance. So. What you want to do here essentially is you can make it warmer or cooler by tumming up or tumming down. And essentially, if we go to around like 5,500, give or take, 5,500 plus or minus 100 is generally kind of a daylight white balance. So that's good. Dial that in, leave it there. And then if you're shooting stuff at night, it needs to go a little bit cooler because night times are not as you get the drift, right? So for now, I'm leaving this on 5,500. Now, the ISO min and max so iso is kind of an artificial brightness that if the scene is very dark you can bring the maximum iso up a lot higher and it kind of artificially brightens the sensor now on small sensors like this on small cameras if you drive this too far then ultimately there's going to be a lot of noise in the image and it's not going to look that good which as a cool photographer like you are you don't want to do that so max and min i have this set to 100 and max is 100 as well so it will never go above 100 when i'm taking a photograph however if you want to change one of these you can bring it up but you can see in the background here even if i bring this up to 3200 the image is getting a lot brighter so i really would suggest iso max 400 minimum 100 maybe drop it even more but when you're shooting your footage your photographs then the gopro is never going to go above whatever you set on the high mode which is a really good thing because too high iso on any camera can bring in a lot of noise now next up here is sharpness and color so sharpness essentially again gopros look like gopros because they seem to have a habit of over sharpening the image now you might like a really sharp looking image and that's fine everybody to their own but I tend to shoot sharpness at low and if you want to sharpen it then you can sharpen it in Lightroom or whatever software that you're using to edit your photos whether that's on your phone or whatever else but if you're out of your mind and you want to have high sharpness then you can just tap sharpness and go in but generally I leave mine on low and then the color profile flat natural or vibrant GoPros really good color again it's a little bit too saturated which meaning the colors are a little bit too ooh, that's a lot of color so leave it at flat which is 
not as colourful, but it allows you to dial in the colours the way you want a little bit better so you can make it more vibrant or more saturated, but let you decide in it as opposed to something like the GoPro Hero 11 Black. And with every iteration of the, the GoPro, it gets a little bit better, but I still feel, just in my opinion, that it might be a little bit too saturated, but hey, that's me. If you want a really saturated looking image, drive this all the ways up to vibrant. Now, let's scroll down here to the shortcuts and the shortcuts are the little things at the bottom corners of each mode that you're in the GoPro. So the lower left one, for example, we can have lens, we can have nothing. So if we go down here, we have output, we can have schedule, capture, timer. So let's say I want the timer as an option. So I'm gonna have that there, I'm gonna to tap to go back. So my lower left is gonna be the timer. Upper left was also the timer. So I'm just gonna scale that down to the shutter speed in case we wanna change the shutter speed anytime soon. Let's go for the upper output. We're gonna leave that as the output, which is raw, whatever mode you want to be in. And then on the lower right, let's look at our white balance because you could be changing that from time to time. So let's tap white balance. Let's tap back. And now if we go back to our photo mode here, we can see we've got our output, we've got our shutter, our timer, and indeed our wonderful white balance. So you can tap any of these, and it's a really quick way of getting to whatever mode or whatever setting that you want to do really, really quick. Now, this is what I'm doing for an example. You will probably find modes or buttons or shutter speeds or whatever that you'll want to get access to really quickly. So after a while of taking a lot of photographs with the GoPro, you can customize this this way to whatever you use quite a bit. Let's say that's editing the current preset. Let's say you're like, oh, I'm after screwing that up, what do I do? So if we go back into the edit mode here and we scroll down, we have a magic button called restore. So we can restore the preset to what it was before, originally right out of the GoPro factory, tap restore, boom, everything has gone back the way it was, which means we've lost what we've just created. Now, what if you wanna create a specific type of mode? You're like burst, night photo, I, yeah, okay, here's the thing, right? We can tap up the top right here, we can manage, so we can organize these, we can bring the night photo up a little bit by just tapping on the sidebar here. Little bit difficult to grab, but you'll get it eventually. And then if we wanna create our own custom mode, the plus symbol up here, let's tap that. So we've got a new preset. We want a new preset for photo. Tap the uh, tick box. So we want the lens, so we can have wide or linear. So the wide is 16 to 34 mils, and then the uh, linear is 19 to 39. So try out both lenses, not a great deal of difference between the two. I tend to kind of leave it on the wide, but keep in mind with wide, you are gonna kind of get that GoPro fisheye look, which you probably have to fix in post. So a lot of times, work out whichever works for you. In this one, I'm just gonna leave it at linear. The output, you know, we like it raw. Uh, so uh, we're going to put this at raw and then we're not going to have any schedule capture. We're not going to have any timer. On the Pro Tune settings, the shutter speed, we can leave it auto. The EV comp, let's just bring it down slightly. Let's go to negative five. The white balance, let's dial this in to, you know, 5,500 for that daylight white balance. Our shutter speed, you can leave an auto. We said we'd leave that in auto. Let's scroll down and let's tap our ISO max. Let's bring this down to 200 because or 400 because I'm thinking, you know what? This is the one that I wanna bring out for daytime shooting all the time. I just wish sometimes that the GoPro screen wasn't as fiddly as it can be, but yeah, I'm trying to do it in a weird way, so it's not gonna be that bad for you. Let's bring the sharpness all the ways down to low and scroll down. We can customize the shortcuts here if we want, but I'm just gonna leave those off. Now we've got our preset set up. I'm gonna tap the uh, tick here and we can give it custom. There's a couple of different names. Hello GoPro, I know you watch these videos. Thank you, let's collab. I would love if there was a complete custom way that you could actually name these to whatever you want, but I'm just gonna leave this at custom, tick the symbol, and that's it. So now if we go back to our presets, we can see we've got custom photo, night photo, and so on. So if we wanna select our custom mode that we just did, that's the one to tap and you're good for those settings. Now, depending on what you're shooting, you could set up any of those other modes to call them whatever you want that you'll know in your head what it is. Now that you've mastered the photo settings, I'd love to see what you've done by the way. How about mastering the video settings? If you wanna come a video Hollywood GoPro ninja, check out the video right here.